Hello and welcome to another short bite. Um, today we're going to look at the grow model. Uh, the grow model is one of the most useful things I've ever found involved in developing coaching skills. A uh, really simple way of applying coaching and it fits really nicely with the standards check form and a part three test form. Uh, as you go through you'll recognize some of the terminology and some of the things uh, that which are on the form um, which we'll go through. Okay um, a little bit of history really. Um, the, the grow model came about developed by the late Sir John Whitmore and colleagues in the 1980s and was proven a model to apply to coaching. Uh, originally it was used as designed for coaching in the workplace but it was adapted in by John himself for training um, John, for a while, was quite um, involved with the driver training industry, uh, especially with his um, famous um, Why Are We Teaching Pupils to Steer, etc., and it caused much controversy at the time. Um, the Grow Model really raises the individual's awareness and some understanding, really, of their own aspirations, their current situations and beliefs, and the possibilities and resources open to them. Also looks at their actions and the way they take on their professional and personal goals. Um, and this is quite important because, of course, the DBSA really are trying to encourage driving instructors to help develop learners' responsibilities. So they're taking on tasks themselves. So they're really looking and just it's just not the superficial way of just learning to drive. Um, you know, oh, if I break the speed limit, I, I will get nipped. Yeah, it's knowing the options available and what might happen, the greater consequences, the risk, the deeper risks, and, and also situations, etc. And as you can see, this fits in quite nicely. Okay, um, don't worry yourself too much with all the technical terms. Okay, we don't need to. So I'm hoping you're not switching off now. It's, I'm, I'm not about trying to get too technical. Uh, I'm just trying to keep it fairly simple. So. It's worth noting that the, the grow model was designed to help people where a trainer had no previous knowledge of the person's skill, really, that they, they were teaching. So basically, a coach would not necessarily know about what it is that they were coaching the person to do, which possibly seems very, very strange to um, anybody who's like driver trainers and things, etc., etc., and probably some school teachers. Uh, one of the things I do is um, I'm a qualified teacher of English as a foreign language and one of the criticisms I get is well how can you teach somebody to speak English when you don't speak their language and we do this using coaching methods you know basically I can teach anybody who speak English and they speak Chinese and Arabic or, or French or whatever the subject is without having no prior knowledge or not being able to speak their language and it's it seems a bit of a strange concept but it works very very well and there are systems there which we use and we use which we use coaching so that was it so let's look at the coaching in more detail um, and see how this works with our pupils the grow the the G from the grow is actually for the goal uh, what does the pupil want or what does the pupil need? Um, I talked about this in, in another video. Really. Um, don't confuse what the pupil wants necessarily. It's not what they, you know, it is what they want, but it's more about what they need, etc. And this is where the grow model works quite well, because sometimes um, it's working out what they need. As we go through, this will become a bit more clearer. Um, we are professionals, unlike, you know, we do know our trade, unlike what coaching was originally designed for. And we have specialist knowledge, so we have a great insight with tips and tricks and a wealth of experience and um, knowledge that, that we can share with our pupils. But the object is not to just pour this out to them. It is more to try and get that, get it from them. So work from a basis that you imagine you don't know the subject, um, but you can help where necessary. When setting a goal, we also need to remember the SMART objectives. There is a short video for this about this on the um, training bites. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into SMART at the moment, but just as a refresher, remembering SMART meant specific, measurable, achievable, 
are realistic in time. So there are very short, specific goals. We need to be able to measure them at the end. They need to be achievable, realistic in time. And there are some overlap between grow and smart objectives as we'll go through. So we set a goal that is specific um, for this person. Okay, having set the goal or having discussed a, a potential goal with our pupil, um, the R from the GROW model is for reality. This is really the current reality as the reality often changes or will change as the pupil grows in confidence, knowledge and skill and responsibility. So it really is the starting point of the lesson. Is it realistic? Um, let's take an example. A similar example I've used in the SMART objectives. A pupil has come to you and they would like to learn. Uh, they say, I want to do a manoeuvre. Um, I've only done two lessons, but I want to do a manoeuvre. All my friends in school are doing a manoeuvre, etc. Well, with our skills and our knowledge, etc., we may be thinking that may not be realistic. So we would explore with the pupil what skills would they need to make this successful. And like I said earlier, let's hope they're coming up with good control skills and good observations. So what we do is we amend the goal to suit this. But here we're keeping in the bigger picture. So whilst we're amending the goals to possibly some control work, etc., we are doing the control work specifically to work on the, the manoeuvre. So we might go around the corner, find a quiet little slight hill, develop clutch control, etc., etc., go all the way through and once we've gone full cycle we'll then amend the goal and now we'll apply them to the turn in the road. There is no reason why they cannot do a turn in the road in two or three lessons or at the end etc. I mean the options when we talk about it can be far widening. It doesn't matter where they really do some of this stuff etc. Um, options. Okay now here's where you discuss what they will need to know to accomplish the skill. So we would talk about, let's, we were talking about our, our, our manoeuvre. We would ask them about, you know, what did they need to know? What control skills, what, what, what um, observations, etc. Where have they got this from? You know, they can look at the pros and cons of doing things different ways, etc. Um, what obstacles might get in their way? What might problems like happen? I mean, you know, if we're in the middle of a road doing a manoeuvre and a vehicle come along, what would they do? What would be the options? What could they do? What would be the problem if maybe we did a whole lesson and there were no vehicles coming along? What, what problems could that cause for us? Well, none initially at the time, but of course, great. If they managed to do all their manoeuvres on driving lessons without any vehicles ever coming along, you can sure bet your dollar there's going to be one come along when they do the driving test, or worse still, later on when they're actually a driver and they really don't know what to do. So thing like that. So looking at things like that, the options is all the things they may need to do. Now takes us to the way forward, or often called the will. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to have an agreement with our learner here. What would you like me to do? Do you want me to demonstrate it? Would you like full talk through, a bit of prompting, or do you just want to have a go, really, etc. So we're going to really discuss the way forward, etc. etc. And we can also talk to them about how we can, you know, commit to the way forward, what things they want me to do, what they do, and what can, you know, how can we plan this bit. We can also ask them how we can review the goal afterwards. So how will we know that learning has taken place and kind of going into the great way of using scaling techniques. This is where also we really want to make sure they understand the level of responsibility that they have and the level of responsibility that you have. And in a sense, it's a bit like a mini agreement. Well, I agree I will give you this help. This is what you will do. But please don't worry. If it goes wrong or any problems, then what would you like me to do? Would you like me to step in? And we would do that as so the GROW model continually cycles through lessons, etc. So as you finish one, you would start the goals for the next one and go around and it's almost like a big circle. Hopefully this has given you a bit of a better understanding of the GROW model and how it works in the coaching. Um, there will be some short online um, coaching sessions on this of which you can ask questions and we can explain more etc. Um, and hopefully this will lead you into it then. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next um, series of videos etc. Um, bye for now and as I always say, 
happy teaching.